wanted to just really share a couple of really important things that we are able to do as clubs locally working with local organizations that may be in your communities already. And um, it's, I'm really excited to be part of uh, the next, you know, these two sessions for um, this next time because I'm also part of the Taking Action for Peace Committee. So both of these are really rotary passions of mine. So it's a pleasure to be here with you today. And um, as I said, we're speaking um, briefly about some rotary water projects that we have worked on in our local communities to help advance Rotary's commitment to a cleaner environment and preservation of our Earth's resources, which you know sounds like a lofty goal. But we hope today to show that there are some ways within your own community you can work with local organizations to pay attention to the local natural resources that can have a great impact in your communities, which ends up really benefiting everyone. So we kind of wanted, and we're here sort of today to represent I am with the Friends of the Rouge, which is a really great organization. I'll share a little bit with you in just a moment. But they are um, located actually in the Plymouth Arts and Recreation Complex in Plymouth, even though they represent about a tri-county area in southern Michigan. And my office also happens to be in the same um, building and our Rotary Club meets in the same building as well. So we have a lot of great connections to uh, work and partner with this organization. Um, but I had them actually prepare some slides to be able to show you today. And um, they have a big map of this beautiful picture of Michigan and Southern Canada in um, their office. And really, you know, it's just a great, lovely visual reminder of the fact that everywhere in Michigan and in Ontario, we are part, we are surrounded by water. And we are surrounded by water that um, each of us um, live in an area where a stream or a river or um, an underground watershed flows into that um, water system, which eventually flows into um, the Detroit River, and you're going to hear a great speaker um, after us talk about the Riverfront Conservancy, and um, then ultimately flows into the Great Lakes. So everything that you do in your local communities around the water that surrounds you affects the water that flows into the river and the water that ends up in our Great Lakes. And um, a watershed... Um, does just what it says it does. It's um, an area of land that sheds water and uh, drains that water from the streams or rainfall into a common outlet and the outflow is what goes into a reservoir or mouth of a bay um, or a stream to get channeled into the river. And so um, some of the watersheds in our areas are clearly um, visible um, because you see the streams and rivers and everything all around you and others really aren't because we have built over top of all of them and uh, but that doesn't mean they're not there they're just underneath so things you put into your storm drains and all of that goes down underneath and still gets into the water systems that flow into your rivers streams and into the Great Lakes so even if it's not a visible reminder that you have all this great water around you, it's still there and it still needs to be um, preserved and help to keep kept clean. So um, one of the things, yes, when you build over all of these places with parking lots and everything is that the storm drains and the storm sewers get all of the crud from your cars and the and um, the salt and everything goes down into those and flows into the rivers. So locally in our Southeast Michigan area, one of our great partners is the Friends of the Rouge. And uh, as I mentioned, they represent sort of the communities in a tri-county area which have watersheds that flow into the Rouge River, which flows into the Detroit River, which flows into Lake Erie. Um, and so there are many more communities just beyond those that surround the Rouge River that are affected by this. And so the um, Friends of the Rouge started in 1989. And frankly, I shouldn't be the one up here talking to you about this. It should be my friend Nancy Darga, who's waving her arm over there, Nancy, because 
Nancy, um, through her work with Wayne County and through her work with the Motor Cities Auto National Heritage Area, is probably the one that highlighted the Friends of the Rouge from the beginning when they were a tiny little group of people meeting in um, an old building somewhere going, you know what, we should really be talking about how we can clean up the rivers and the streams and the watersheds around us. And because Nancy brought them into these larger organizations and working with Wayne County, all of a sudden then she was highlighting all of the great work that they could be doing if they got support from their communities around them and from people like Rotary and other organizations who care about the preservation of our water systems. So cheers to Nancy for doing that because now Friends of the Rouge is, um, yes, she deserves a round of applause, she really does. And her husband, Mike, was the um, chair of the board for Friends of the Rouge for like how many years? Tw oh, Jesus, okay, 28. <laughs> so there you go. But um, uh, I myself come to this whole idea of what it means to have a clean river around you. Um, I went to Dearborn High. I am graduated in 1974, so that means you know what this year is for me. Um, but the Rouge River flows behind Dearborn High along the Outer Drive and everything back there. And uh, back in the day when we were being bad and we skip class and go back there and smoke cigarettes, the big thing was to watch the Rouge and if a big um, spill of oil came by, you threw your matches or your cigarette on there to see if it would light on fire. And it would. So this is where we started with this river. And, um, but then you get people like um, Friends of the Rouge, like Nancy Darga, like other people who imagined that we could have a cleaner river and a cleaner environment around us. And I also have to give hats off to Bill Ford, who, um, as you all know, is very environmentally um, interested in making sure that anything that the Ford Motor Company touched, they were going to try to clean up the water that really got polluted by a lot of what they were doing. So um, the goal of the Friends of the Rouge is all of these various things, to not only talk to you about restoring the river, and, but teaching you and teaching children about how we can protect the water around us and enjoying the trails. Um, one of the big things they do is to monitor um, the rivers for um, the health of the river around you and the streams. And um, I've been involved in counting bugs and counting frogs and looking for certain kind of fish, all that are great indicators of the health of the water that's around you. They are working now with uh, STEM education in the schools as I mentioned, doing lots of monitoring. Um, fish, bugs, frogs, look at those cute little frogs. Frogs are a great indicator of the health of a river. They can't live in there if the water is polluted. And um, so you can see the map here really from um, where we are in Plymouth and how the whole Rouge River watershed flows into and connects all of us in these communities. Margaret Mead's wonderful saying, um, because a group of small committed citizens really can change the world. We all know that because we're Rotarians. Um, and so one of the big projects um, right literally in our backyard was um, with the Friends of the Rouge. This is the building that we are all housed in and it's um, a hundred year old school building which used to be the Plymouth High School. Then it became a middle school and then it is currently now the Plymouth Arts and Recreation Complex. And when it came time that they knew they had to take out the old parking lot and put in a new one, um, they decided to work with the Friends of the Rouge who got a very large grant to be able to create rain gardens um, in this um, new parking lot. So this parking lot's surrounded by rain gardens and I have a, just a short video that you'll see in a moment that tells a little bit more about the rain gardens themselves, how they work and how much um, storm water they can take care of with what they do. But um, rain gardens are built all around the parking lots. They're made up of native plants, which tend to really make the soil a lot better and the soil can become a lot more absorbent for not only rainwater, but for filtering out impurities 
um, before they go down into the water streams. And um, kids love this. It's a great way to get young people involved. And um, Friends of the Rouge, they have lots of fun with everything that they do. They also take great boat trips. So if you're into kayaking, you can go with Friends of the Rouge on a whole kayak of the Rouge and um, leading out to Detroit River. Um, so the, the ways that you can really make a difference are listed here. We'll share this deck if people would like to know about it because the things that are listed here is just a way of making a point that you don't have to build a giant rain garden or be part of a large organization that's redoing a parking lot or anything like that. You can make small differences in your communities by not only through education, but um, by knowing where your watersheds are, knowing how you can help to keep things clean. Um, you know, as things as simple as getting your gutter uh, downspout to go so it goes out into your lawn. So the water comes out and goes there. When your gutters downspouts come out and they drain down off of your driveway, all of the crud that's in your driveway is now going down into the, st into the storm sewer that's right in your um, neighborhood on your street. So uh, learn about ev um, invasive species in your gardens and try to get rid of them. Native plants are the best plants for attracting pollinators, but also for helping to clean up the water. And um, so you can read more about the Friends of the Rouge and learn more about the great work that they do um, by following them. And um, then, Liz, if you want to do this, um, well, sorry, I guess that wasn't quite the end. Um, plant a rain garden. They'll tell you a little bit more in the video about the rain gardens. So, Liz, if you would like to um, fire that up, that would be terrific. This really shares what they did in um, the uh, park um, parking lot specifically. Hi, my name is Rosina Newton, and here at Friends of the Rouge, I'm a restoration assistant and volunteer coordinator. No matter where you go, you're in a watershed. The Rouge River has four branches, and those four branches make up 127 river miles. The watershed is 467 square miles, and it drains into the Detroit River. The Rouge River is home to 1.35 million people in 48 municipalities. It's one of the most urban rivers in Michigan. Friends of the Rouge was created in 1986 from the efforts of community members who were dedicated to cleaning up the Rouge River. The mission of Friends of the Rouge is to restore, protect, and enhance the Rouge River watershed through stewardship, education, and collaboration. Because so much of our Rouge River watershed is covered with hard surfaces, rain can't soak into the ground. Instead, it runs across the hard surfaces, like roofs, driveways, and parking lots, picking up pollution like salt, oil, fertilizers, lawn chemicals, soil, and trash, along with the rainwater on its way to storm drains and into the Rouge River. A rain garden is a shallow depression in the ground planted with native plants and connected to a downspout or other sources of heavy rainfall. Native plants have deep fibrous roots that can reach up to 15 feet into the ground. These roots create channels into the soil allowing more rainwater to soak into the ground on site rather than running off into our storm drains. This keeps our Rouge River cleaner and healthier for all. Rain gardens can also help reduce flooding as larger storm events have become more common due to climate change. Our rain gardens are designed to drain within 48 hours to prevent mosquito breeding. Native pollinators need native plants. Rain gardens not only manage rainwater, but also create beautiful pollinator habitat. By providing food and shelter, rain gardens support a diverse community of beneficial insects, like butterflies and bees, as well as birds and other wildlife. 
When you replace an area of standard grass lawn with a native plant rain garden, you are enhancing the value of your property and also reducing the need for mowing and using lawn chemicals. Friends of the Rouge moved to downtown Plymouth in 2019 to the Plymouth Arts and Recreation Complex, also known as PARC. This 100-year-old building was once a school, saved from demolition and repurposed into a hub of creativity and inspiration. The parking lot was scheduled to be repaved in 2020. With funding from the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy, also known as EGLE, the Environmental Protection Agency, and PARC, Friends of the Rouge incorporated rain gardens into the new parking lot design. The park rain gardens are taking water directly from the roof downspouts and taking runoff from the parking lot. Since the gardens have been installed, our neighbors on Adams Street have reported they no longer have flooded basements. This reduction in flooding has helped protect our Rouge River headwaters in nearby Tonquish Creek. The rain gardens include a variety of educational signs about rain gardens, the project itself, and some of the native plants in the gardens. There have been many studies that prove being outside and connecting with nature helps reduce stress and improve your overall mood. Gardens are great for education and exploration for people of all ages. Rain gardens are an amazing way to create a beautiful landscape for any home, business, or community space. Join us as a volunteer in the Park Rain Gardens all the way from April to October. Come visit our website and find out when the next opportunity is to volunteer with Friends of the Rouge. Thank you for your interest in learning about rain gardens and in keeping the Rouge River cleaner and healthier for everyone. So the, the, some of the takeaways from that are um, our club as well as the Noon Club, we host some of the rain gardens. There are 33 of them in this around this parking lot and they need maintenance, they need weeding. So that's one of the things that our club does. But we have also been encouraging other, um, especially new development, <coughs> to think about when they're building that parking lot, when they're doing plantings around any kind of a new development, consider putting in rain gardens. It's much easier to do it um, originally than it is to start from uh, taking something out. The other thing is, um, you, you saw from there, you can do a pollinator rain garden in your own um, yard at home. You don't need to have a big area. You don't need to do like no mow may where you don't cut anything. You can still do that. Even a small area um, in your own yard can make an impact in helping to clean up the water in your community. So thank you. And um, I am pleased to introduce James Beetson. He's going to talk about um, another water project that their club is doing that is in our same um, local area that is part of the Rouge River watershed. Thank you. All right, uh, my name is James Geetson. I am the president-elect of the Rotary Club of Plymouth and our club, along with our friends at the Rouge, and our international partners in Tree Manning, Australia, have taken on a global grant project that is nearly near and dear to our district governor, Russ Jones Hart. Uh, in 1987, the United States and Canada identified 43 areas of concern along the majestic coastlines of our Great Lakes, the Rouge River watershed being one of them. This project will focus on the shoreline rehabilitation of Wilcox and Phoenix Lakes near the beginnings of the Rouge River located right here in District 6400. Furthermore, it will ensure the sustainability of the dredging and habitat rehabilitation already going on uh, in, these way, in these lakes. Our project will start by removing invasive species. Volunteers will then plant native vegetation which will support infiltration of stormwater into the ground. This will slow 
slow polluted waters down so that it can be filtered by the root systems of these natural native plants before it enters the aquifer and ultimately the Rouge River. Bees, butterflies, and birds, and a myriad of other critters will play vital role or play a very vital role in sustaining the this habitat area. Funding for this project is $25,000 in landscape and design, $215,000 in native plants, and $10,000 for equipment rental and tools. This endeavor extends far beyond the confines of our lakeshore. This, uh, the, as, as sediment is swept away and pollution is cleared from the water, downstream communities will be able to realize the benefits of cleaner water healthier local ecosystems, and a healthier e uh, environment around them. For more information on how you can get involved or your club can get involved in this global grant, please reach out to District Governor Russ Jones. Together we can preserve and rejuvenate a more sustainable environment for generations to come. <laughs>